And blah, 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 blah. Hey guys, it's Suresh. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning into another video with me today. Well, I am back with my beautiful sunset in the background. For anyone who thought that Seattle was all rain, Mm. So today I have a fun Integrity Toys review to share with you guys. I'm reviewing one of their lines that I have never interacted with before, and that is the East 59th Street collection. The first time I saw this line, I just wasn't really drawn to it, to be honest. I thought that all the characters, um, i.e. dolls, just had really strong jawlines and like very masculine faces. The clothes seemed a bit dated to me. Something about this collection just never really appealed to me, but there was a new character who debuted a couple of months ago named Orly Gray, Lady Orly Gray. Um, real quick, Future Suresh here uh, jumping in. Very much realized that her name is not Orly, it's Orlia. For some reason, I decided to drop the A in this video, so yeah, please don't come for me for it. Just wanted to let you know. Okay, bye! And I believe, if I remember correctly, she's a new character to the collection, or she's a new sculpt, something like that. But something about her face was pretty er and softer. And more than anything, it was her really, really beautiful ensemble that I like fell in love with. It's so 50s, it's so Dior, it's so Balenciaga, it's so Hermes. I just went gaga for it. Midnight Kiss is her name. Lady Orly Gray Dress Doll from the East 59th Street Collection. I'm really excited actually because to be honest, what I thought when I first saw the ensemble was, oh my God, this would look amazing on a silkstone. <laughs> I know from experience that a lot of integrity dolls, well, at least like fashion royalty dolls, um, can share clothes with silkstones. So I'm curious to see what this ensemble looks like in person. And um, I'm also curious to see what it would look like on a silkstone. So stay tuned. <laughs> Tissue paper's ripped. Walk, walk. Well, let's go ahead and get this undone. Oh. Ooh, what a pretty box, actually. Here we go, the front of the box, beautiful. The other thing that I've always thought that's so weird about the East 59th logo is it looks like it's like a Chrysler logo or a car logo because of this little like triangle thing that's happening here. Um, I don't know. Shall we go ahead and take a look inside? All right, one, two, and three. Oh my God, wow, she's beautiful. Wow, this is like a closet. Although I really do not like this inside tray here. This is like cheap plastic or Oh no. At first glance, I'm just completely taken by this beautiful suit. What gorgeous tailoring, huh? Love the color. Obviously, you guys know that I die for blue. I love all these button details and all these um, beautiful little folds and pleats and darts here. Wow, wow, wow. Gorgeous. I'm loving the color of that satin halter neck blouse underneath there. Gorgeous. Um, lovely hair. Her lashes seem abnormally long. Like she's giving me like Snuffleupagus vibes, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Shall we get into the accessories and take a look here? I'm not sure what all the compartments here are. Like, it's a lot of compartments. But let's start at the very top. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three. <gasps> oh my goodness, it's her beautiful swing coat. Oh, love it. This was the piece that sold it all for me. Let me tell you, my God, I'm so excited to get in and check this beautiful piece out. Oh my God, I want this for myself. And then underneath that, we see um, what I believe is perhaps the telescoping portion of her doll stand. Cute, cute. And then there's another little door beneath that that has Oh, nothing in it. Okay. <laughs> walk, walk. And then another drawer or cabinet or whatever right below that. So let's go ahead and open that up. Ooh, okay. Here are all of her main accessories. Oh, cute. All right, so I see a beautiful white straw hat, very remin reminiscent of our very, very beloved Dior look from the 1940s, gorgeous. I see a blue like champagne flute here with some gold um, dust around the rim and a blue drink, how cute. I love this gold rim idea, oh, love. Okay, and then in here I also see 
um, her shoes, a pair of beautiful high heels. I see her additional set of hands. They look like they're gloved hands with a little white um, or little blue dots on them rather. And then I see details of her doll stand there. And then I also see her beautiful Hermes Birkin-esque handbag in there. Cute, cute. I am trying to lift this out of here and get to the back and there we go ta-da just like so oh i do not like that this is in this like weird plastic thing oh that's not cute that's not cute don't put an expensive doll in a plastic tray oh give us paper honey and then underneath that is her certificate of authenticity here um, a really pretty certificate actually. True integrity style of like beautiful imitation quality paper. Let's get this doll out of this egg carton. I mean her packaging. So she's tied down in the back here with white ribbons and I can't get over this plastic tray. <gasps> Yay! Oh my God, look at that arch. Yes, mama. Hi. Well, I do say you guys, this tailoring is it's like scary good. There are no slits in either her skirt or her jacket. This would be very difficult to walk in for a real life woman. Oh, her hair's braided. Oh, wow. Look at that. Zoo honey. Yes, yes. So she has knee guards here that we will go ahead and take off because yeah. By the way, kids, I'm headed back to NYC this weekend to see my friends. I haven't actually been back since I moved here, which has now been seven months. I am so excited. I'm obviously gonna vlog it, and I'm hoping to not only see my closest friends and catch up with them, but also going to try and hit the Met and see the costume exhibit, the camp um, exhibit. I have to say, at least right now, I feel like relieved and like oddly happy that I'm not going back to live there. <laughs> I mean, she definitely has a larger jawline than the other dolls um, in the IT family that I love, but it's not heinous. I feel like this is definitely a doll that is for the older connect, uh, generation, right? The older jaw, doll collecting generation, the the true like fashion savants, do you know what I mean? I don't know if the younger collectors would really get much of this or care or understand. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Tape on my fingers. My God, this is so pretty. I love this. Oh, let me also go ahead and get the rest of her accessories on and I will be right back after these messages. Here is Midnight Kiss Lady Orly Grey, fully dressed in all of her accessories. And you guys, she really is very beautiful all put together. Um, the face is still interesting to me, like it's definitely a bit more masculine than I'm used to in my dolls. Um, but her makeup is really beautiful and with the whole ensemble together, she really does have quite the wow factor. Definitely very, very 50s inspired from all the great couturiers. Dior obviously comes to mind with this beautiful voluminous coat here and the structured suit and the straw hat, of course, like that's kind of an iconic Christian Dior look from the late 40s, early 50s. And um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving her beautiful little Ur uh, Hermes Birkin inspired bag. Gorgeous. Uh, I also like all this blue tone on tone here. I, I really, really find that it's working for me. Love, love. Beautiful spiked shoes here. Gorgeous stiletto pumps. They look like they're almost in like a bit of a patterned um, exotic skin, maybe like a snake or a crocodile. I did put her gloved hands on. There are her beautiful bangles. I really actually like these earrings as well. They're really cute. They're like half flowers almost. And the hairstyle is really jiving with this hat, I will say. It's definitely creating that period drama type of mo uh, moment to it. I really like the halter top that is underneath that beautiful um, jacket that is sitting underneath the coat. So all the layers I think are just so, so beautiful, right? Like there's just so much to look at here that it's quite delicious. 
Obviously, I'm dying for her skin complexion because it's like we're sort of the same color. Yay, yay. And here she is from the back. I just love this coat so much. This also can be called a trapeze coat, um, but it's more commonly known as a swing coat. And it's called a swing coat because the coat would swing behind her kind of from side to side as she walked. And it creates this very dramatic, beautiful kind of shape to it that I am just gaga for. Absolutely magnificent. Well, I tell you what, I definitely missed the mark on matching my bow tie with her ensemble. <laughs> I did not realize that it was so much more periwinkle. For some reason, the way in my head I remembered it, it was more like this like light blue color. So pardon us because I'm sure we clash crazily on camera. Sorry. <laughs> I do like also that there are two dressmaker pins that come with her hat. So you can very easily pin it into place. And I think that's very chic and sophisticated for them to consider that and um, think of, you know, the fact that that's actually what we do. That's what I do for all my dolls. And um, I love that they thought of that. So kudos team IT. Also, I look crazy tired today. It's because I am. Um, apologies. I feel like <laughs> the past number of times I see you guys, I'm always like, I'm so tired. But I shot a video at work today for a new product that we are launching. Funny enough, in the same format as I shoot these videos. So I feel like I've been staring at lights like all day and my eyes are just like, I'm over it. <laughs> this coat, everything. Everything, everything, and more. Just exquisite. So another reason that swing coats were really popular in the 40s and the 50s, I guess, pretty much 50s, was um, the 50s biggest trend was the big um, skirts, right? Like Dior, new look, the nipped waist, the really big skirts. So they had to, to create coats that fit the entire skirt underneath the coat. And at the time, the coats were obviously much trimmer. So the swing coat was kind of born. And not only do you swing when you walk in it because of all the volume back here and the way it kind of drapes off, off your shoulders and the, the tall of your back, but it also accommodates the big skirts. So there you go. You know, I never, I never do much with these little accessories that these dolls come with. I feel bad about it, but I just I don't ever remember that they, that they have so many things. <laughs> It also just seems like a little bit playliney to me when they come with so many odd little accessories, but I know that many of you guys love it. Oh, that's cute. Oh, I don't know how she's gonna hold this, but there it is in her hand, kind of, sort of. <laughs> if you guys who are my dear Barbie collectors and Barbie fans are still on the fence about trying out an Integrity doll, um, let me tell you that number one, you're not cheating on Barbie. Don't think of it that way. And number two, pause. That is beautiful. Look at that. <gasps> no matter how amazing Barbie is, I don't know that she's ever had this level of detail. If one of the reasons you love Barbie is because of her fashions, let me tell you, the Integrity dolls, <sighs> I mean, they're obviously a bit more expensive, but let me tell you, they are so worth it and if you are a fashion lover and fashion connoisseur like myself, you've got to try one of these dolls. Like they are just exquisite. Like how, <laughs> just how? There is the outfit without the jacket on. There's the beautiful little halter blouse there and the skirt on its own. Somehow the skirt looks a little bit bulkier and I think it kind of is because there's definitely space here. I would have liked if there was a slit in here, but Hey, listen, she ain't going nowhere. I get it. Oh, she has little undies on too. Uh, cute. I have a fabric that is like exactly this fabric. Where did I put that? Here is Lady Orly Gray in the buff so that you guys can get a better look at her darling little physique. Now, I believe the East 59th collection has their own body mold. So I am not entirely sure, but it looks a lot like the FR bodies to me, to be honest, um, because especially of the large bust. It also looks a little bit like the RuPaul bust. She is very, very beautiful indeed. Definitely a very strong jawline there. And at an angle, she could look 
very much like a drag queen because I feel like at certain angles, I also see like a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Not throwing shade, I'm just saying, and that just maybe because the coloring of her uh, complexion here, but really, really beautiful makeup. I definitely love the winged liner. I love that wet lid type of look. Very, very beautiful indeed. Living for the gorgeous red lips here. And I like that her eyes are kind of sleepy as well. The one thing that I'm not crazy about are the lashes. Like they don't gradiate from inside to outside. So on her um, right eye there, you can see the inside, the lashes are so long and it's like impossible to straighten out because they don't really have anywhere to go. So that's a little bit annoying, but um, you know, I guess it is what it is. Beautiful brows, by the way. Love her hair. It's gorgeous, like dark, dark, dark brown, almost like a soft black kind of hair. Very, very nicely done with the little widow's peak there as well. That definitely gives her a look of distinction. And here is the bun in the back. It's like a number of braids kind of pulled up into a chignon type of a look. Very beautiful, I really like it. It's um, different from a lot of the other dolls that I've seen in the FR line and the new face line and um, other IT lines, I guess. So left her earrings on obviously for you guys to see. They look like they're little half flowers with the white being the center and the blue being the little petals. It's also like two different shades of blue. So it's like a navy there on the outside and then like little periwinkle stones next to that really really pretty and it's these kinds of details that we just go gaga for right and then here are her beautiful little bracelets also one in more of a periwinkle and one in like a deeper cobalt almost like a navy with um, a gold backing to it beautiful there is her manicure i switched her hands um, back to her flesh-toned hands and then she also has a pedicure, obviously, and a gorgeous arched foot. I left one of the shoes on so that you guys can see what it looks like. I can't tell you whose other shoes she could wear, but I imagine that she can fit into FR um, sizing. So the shoes are really beautiful. They look really nice on her. She's a very beautifully accentuated arch to her foot there, just magical. And then in terms of articulation, like all other Integrity dolls, we see here that she moves at her shoulder, here at her elbow, here obviously at her wrist with interchangeable hands, here at her head, obviously, and then her breastplate as well moves around just like so. And her hips here and her waist are static, so they don't move, but then she does kick up just like so. She kicks back at her knees, just like so. And then when you pull her leg apart, you can see the ball mechanism that makes her joints move. She does have a beautiful pair of underwear here on as well. They're not nude on her, but they are of like a beige type of color. In that beautiful soft trico fabric that Integrity makes all their underwear in, has one hook closure here in the back. And then here she is from the back. Um, I am absolutely gaga for her skin tone. I love, love, love her skin. It's so pretty. We're definitely so sisters, so you guys can just call me Orly. <laughs> Here is her beautiful halter neck blouse. It's in a gorgeous periwinkle silk that has the most lovely, lovely sheen to it. Adorable. We see a center seam coming down the front here, so it looks like two panels joined together in the center. The neck portions, um, actually crisscross over each other just like so. So that creates a really interesting little point of interest as well. Um, the tailoring as always is impeccable. We see another little panel right here and right there. So there's one, two, three, four panels all together. We see a dart coming up here to give shape to her bust. Beautiful waist that's sculpted really nicely to the doll's actual waistline there. Here in the back, we see that there are one, two, three, four silver closures and four thread loops to go with it, along with a little lavender colored facing in this really beautiful lavender fabric here, like a silk blended fabric that is giving some lining. My goodness, how cute, right? And then the back of the neck also fastens with two silver hooks here and two thread loops right there. And then we see her little integrity tag right there. So cute. Here is her beautiful pencil skirt. 
What a lovely piece this is. I absolutely adore this fabric. It is a gorgeous soft window pane type of a print to it. It feels like it's a wool blend, so that is quite lovely, and that's exactly what these types of um, skirt suits would have been in, so I appreciate that very much. Um, very, very minimal and clean construction. One large panel here in the front and then here in the back. We see two panels coming together to make the back portion here. Two little darts up here at the waistline to give some shape. And then we see two silver hooks right there with two thread loops and a facing actually in the same color as the lining, which is a beautiful um, blue color silk here. It's a little bit more on the navy side than it is periwinkle, but so, so gorgeous. I love it lined fully all the way. There we go. And then you can see her little integrity tag there as well. There is no waistband to the skirt, so it is, um, again, very simple in its construction, but so nicely done. I adore it. Here is her exquisite little jacket. This is just so, so haute couture from the 50s. Oh my goodness. I love the three-quarter length sleeve here. I love the way that it is nipped so beautifully here at the waist. I love the way that it kind of bells out and flares out at the waist there into the hip area. I like these little crisscross details here with the buttons. I find that so interesting and so sweet. And then here in the back here, we see the gentle flare of the back slope here so beautiful look at those two big panels coming together to create the back of this piece there the tailoring is just like how how like what did you use <laughs> this is amazing and then when we open the front of the jacket we see the fastenings here one two three silver hooks and then thread loops to correspond with that right there and the entire inside is fully lined in that beautiful blue silk that the skirt is lined in as well. The sleeves are fully, fully lined. Yep, I have no idea how they do this. This is incredibly difficult work to do. So the fact they have this much patience is just awe-inspiring to me. There's her IT tag, gorgeous. It feels very substantial, I'll tell you that. Like It feels thick, it feels like it has multiple layers to it. The neckline especially just feels so beautiful and reinforced. I love this so, so much. I mean, look at the panel work here in the front. We see all the panels coming together to create this. There are set in sleeves there. My God, so gorgeous. The little black buttons are not functioning buttons. They're more of a decorative element. Um, just wow. Here is the piece de resistance of the entire ensemble, for me at least. This beautiful blue silk trapeze slash swing coat my goodness i absolutely die for this fabric it's so beautiful it's almost like a crushed silk because you can see some patterning in it um, it needs a little bit of a uh, press here from it sitting in the box the whole piece here when we open it up appears to be of a half circle pattern piece we see one panel here two here three and four. So four panels coming together. The inside is fully lined in that beautiful lavendery slash lilac colored silk that her halter top blouse is made of. And then we also see this beautiful pleat detail here in the front. I mean, just, oh my God, I could cry. This is so beautiful. I love this so much. I love this, love this. No fastenings. This coat definitely does not need any type of fastenings because the way it's worn, it kind of hugs the shoulders up here and sits just like so. So even when it's flapping in the wind, it doesn't really roll over you and there's sleeves in it. So um, there's a three quarter length sleeve here with a rolled up cuff. This reminds me a little bit of that beautiful Barbie we recently saw. What was her name? Um, Serenade in Satin. She, she had a coat that was so beautiful and it kind of reminded me of this a little bit because of the cuffed sleeves. So. Um, yeah, there we go. I feel like Barbie works her way into everyone's psyche, huh? <laughs> the sleeves are fully lined as well, which you can see just like so. Remarkable, darling. Are these foldable? Yes, they are. There we go. So she can wear it down if she doesn't want the cuff pulled up. Lovely. Magical. Magical. And what I love about the inside is that you can't see any of the construction because it's all beautifully hidden away. Um, with the lining. Look how nicely this hemline is done. I mean, just magical. Oh my God, and there's a facing over here so that when the coat flaps open, you don't see the lining, you see more of the same fabric. Just, 
I'm speechless. It's so pretty. Here is her beautiful handbag. It's definitely a direct inspiration from Hermes, their Birkin bag in particular, but I'm here for it. I mean, who doesn't love a good Birkin bag, right? Um, it looks like it does snap open. There is one little silver or no, one gold hook there, interesting. And then this comes out just like so, and then the bag can be opened just like so. Oh, cute, okay. We see like bright blue inner lining here, um, turquoise kind of, or like a beautiful aqua color actually. Gorge. I like the way it's kind of peeking through there. Um, yeah, no other closings, uh, but that's generally kind of how a lot of the Hermes Birkins work, depending on the, the tier which you buy into. Um, yeah, it's a full leather fabric. It feels lovely it's uh, the same material that her shoes are made of actually and i like the little handles as well they're nice and secure and just such a beautifully well-made piece huh here are her beautiful high-heeled pumps they are in the same blue fabric that her handbag is in there are cream colored soles there that we can see and that go into the back of the heel as well the heel itself is painted blue down into the sole that joins into the rest of the shoe there. We see that the insoles there are also in like a blue faux leather, but I don't see that blue anywhere else on her ensemble. So that's actually really cute. It makes us feel like these shoes are so special indeed. Really nicely fit on her foot and I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, just lovely little true integrity style handmade shoes. Here is her little uh, cocktail drink here. I wanted to show you what this looks like up close. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I'm never really one for these accessories per se. I don't really know what to do with them, and I often feel like they kind of cheapen the doll, so I just keep them away. But this is actually really pretty. Look at that gold glitter rim there. This is a really good idea. I mean, I don't even do cocktails or serve cocktails. I'm usually just kind of a straight out of the bottle, whether it's, you know, scotch or wine type of guy, but <laughs> this is really cute. Maybe I should start rimming all of my champagne glasses in gold glitter. Hmm. So there we have it, guys. This is Midnight Kiss Lady Orly Gray from the Integrity Toys East 59th Street collection for 2018. She really is such a beautiful doll. I um, am totally kind of taken aback by what she's like in person. Um, I love, love, love the ensemble. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited to give it a bit of a press and to style it a little bit more. I'm definitely hoping to try it on some of our beloved Silkstones, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> if you guys get a chance to explore the East 59th Street collection and you have never have in the past, like myself, um, yeah, I definitely encourage you to start. I mean, not all the dolls are gonna be, you know, your cup of tea, like they're probably not mine either, but this doll in particular, I love. And I think if you love old world couture and original beautiful oak couture from the 40s and 50s, you will love Miss Orly Gray here. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you guys learned something. Please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to hit that little bell icon after the subscribe button. That way you guys will be notified every Thursday when I upload a new video. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at SureshNY. That's generally where I post all my updates. And until I see you guys again, Miss Orly Gray and I are headed back to our hotel rooms. We're gonna go pack for this weekend's trip to NYC. And since she's from East 59th and I lived on East 79th for a while, we're gonna compare notes about what we're gonna do this weekend and call up our friends, obviously. Wherever you guys are in the world, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Big hugs and kisses from me and Lady Orly here in Seattle. And I'll see you guys again next Thursday for another video, okay? Bye.